Welcome to Tulsa World Opinion. Each week, we will highlight something that we either wrote this past week or we'll be writing in the upcoming weekend to explain a little bit about more of the editorial board's position and what we write about. So I am Jenny Graham, the editorial's editor, and... I'm Bob said I'm an editorial's writer. And this Sunday on December 12th, we are writing an editorial about Senator Langford joining a group of Republican lawmakers in a letter that they sent to the DOD Secretary Lloyd Adams. And in it, they express concern about the Pentagon's Countering Extremism Working Group. And there was a report, an ongoing, from what I understand, investigation into what's leading to extremism in our country. And to me, this brings up domestic terrorism, that we see a rise in this. It's whether it's polarization or anger, but something's radicalizing people. And the letter was couched in the criticism of this working group based on free speech or wokeness, whatever you want to call it. But I look at it differently and I look at it as there's anger popping up in school boards. There's anger popping up at city, city councils that bordering on violence and danger. And that's what when we talk about this January 6th insurrection. That's where this came from. And so this news report was written by, I want to give credit to Tulsa World reporter Randy Crable, but as an editorial board, it concerns us that our senator and other Republicans are making this a political issue when it's really about, I think, a national security issue. So, um, but Bob took the lead on actual writing the editorial and he read the letter. And I'm just curious, what are your thoughts when you read the letter? What, what, what did you think of it at the time? You know, looking at it, it's, it's written in a way that is trying to do two things at once. It's trying to sound reasonable as in like, you know, we understand that there are security issues. We want you to take care of that. And then it starts going into this language of, you know, not wanting the military to be subject to adhering to leftist, woke, whatever, you know, it's kind of using all these terms that are kind of big right now in the right in terms of what they're trying to fight. So the strange thing about it to me is anybody who voted for the bill in which this is authorized, they should know this. And this is something that Senator Langford actually voted for. He, he approved voting for this uh, passing the Senate. And then when uh, then President Trump overrode or vetoed the bill, he voted to override along with the vast majority of the rest of the Senate, you know, both sides, both parties. So this isn't something that is new or caught anybody by surprise. This is something that they've known about and they knew the Pentagon was going to be working on this because the Pentagon has been trying to combat what you call ill elements within the military ranks for a long time, whether it's uh, organized crime, you know, gang stuff, um, harassment issues and things like that. These are things that they look into and what they've seen with extremism is this is becoming a bigger problem. You know, we have five people who are either active military or National Guard members were among the people who were arrested and charged in January 6 riots. And you've got a bunch of other people beyond that, you know, many more people who were veterans that were involved in that. And that kind of told the Pentagon that we've got a problem here. So I think what the senators are trying to get at is they don't want this to be some kind of a big brother thing that's going against conservatives. But they're telling this to an institution, and this isn't really in our editorial, but I'll just go ahead and come out and say it. They're doing this an institution that we know is fairly conservative by nature when you're talking about the United States military. If they're going after extremism, that's not the same thing as trying to, you know, counter conservatism. That's not what's going on. Those two are not the same things at all. So 
Well, and I think you make it, and the editorial makes a point that the vast majority of the military is not radicalized. They're not, I mean, right. we're talking about, um, you know, a small group. But I think the thing that came up in my mind was, you know, 1995, the Oklahoma City bombing, all the conspirators yes. were, you know, the two main ones. And then the, the their third one, they all came from the military. Not that the military caused the radicalization, but but something, you know, was targeting them. And, and, and we're seeing that in the, the national reporting from the insurrection is showing that it's not so much active military that is a concern, but they're finding a lot more veterans were, uh, you know, in, involved. And it, and I think it's it's worth kind of bringing up like, why? What? Where is that that pull for for violence? Because we're not talking about speech. We're talking about people who will bring a gun to a government building with the intention of harm, or gun to a, you know, or a bomb at a a building. So you know, I just I I, I see that. So much that, you know, there everyone at what point, and this gets at what point is speech turn into, you know, more than that. And I think that's what people are concerned with. But I, but right now we're just seeing more and more violent actions that I think we have. I mean, I'm, that's why I, I like I'm backing the idea of this working group. So, um, and it's not just military for me. I mean, it's we're seeing. I mean, go to school boards go to, you know, city council meetings, and people are feeling, I don't know, a little more emboldened to, you know, walk that line of, 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 a, of an attack. And I and think that public threatened. officials are hearing, feeling that. Sure, sure. And with the working group, what they're really hoping to do, too, is they want to nip this in the bud. They want to stop this stuff before it becomes a larger problem. So what they've seen since so far here in 2021 is not quite three, almost 300 instances of reports of extremism and various actions have been taken to, to take a look at those things, investigate them and so forth. But all they're really trying to do with the working group right now, it's not even so much about you know, we're going to come down hard on these people or here's the things you can or cannot say. All they're trying to do is figure out a way to go across all of the branches of the military to where everyone is reporting and using the same kind of data that they're collecting on this. So it may be the data collection that some of these centers are objecting to, but the wider problem is that if you have you know, say in the beginning of 2021, enough people that are starting to be, like you said, emboldened to use force or to help plan to use force or both. What's it going to look the next time around if people are more angry? You know, when does it start to become a more acceptable thing for people uh, within the military that to believe that, you know, hey, we're just going to do this? And that presents a really huge problem, something that the military doesn't want any part of. The spirit of the military is one that it does not get involved in domestic politics. And it's one of those things where the military's purpose is to protect the country. So when they see this kind of activity, it's not that they are even trying to curtail what people's speech is. Like you said, they are actually after people who are radicalized. And that doesn't have to be a radicalization of you know, supporting this person or supporting that movement or anything else. You know, violent radicalism is, you know, extremism. That's what they're trying to prevent. So to come back on this particular working group seems kind of, to me anyway, this seems more like in advance of an election year, midterms are coming up. And everyone's starting to bark out these talking points wherever they can. Because like you said, they were doing it about the school board stuff with uh, DOJ. This uh, letter to, uh, to uh, the Pentagon chief is no different. You know, just a different, few different words, a few different tar targets of, you know, what they're trying to, who they're trying to talk to. 
but the message is the same. We're trying to fight wokeism. We're trying to fight socialism. We don't want this people who are against that stuff to feel like they're being silenced. And none of that is being silenced. It's more of a thing of they just don't want to see another instance where they have people who wear the uniform involved in something like what we saw on January 6th or any, or something potentially worse like we saw in Oklahoma City. You know, when we do these editorials, I don't know about you, but I ended up going down these rabbit holes of research that you start with a letter and you go, and I came across this, uh, this was on the a military.com uh, article, and they were quoting a, uh, a a person by the name of Chris, Christopher Goldsmith, who had started this firm, uh, Sparvarius, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but he looked at, and it's, it's a firm that analyzes domestic attacks, domestic terrorism attacks, and one of the things he was finding is that there's certainly this element of um, that online algorithms that I know that we've written about before, you've written about before specifically, that veterans tend to be targeted with disinformation. So the military and, and veterans are not sus any more susceptible to disinform you know, to being radicalized than, than you or me, but it's more about how maybe they are targeted. And this particular veteran's theory is that it's because they are, um, they have social power that people, you know, we have a great respect for our military and people in a yeah, lot of the yeah. military members come out and they are leaders in their community and mm. that they're, they're trained. And so people who are, you know, these bad actors in our world are targeting disinformation to, to maybe some of our veterans. And that, and I found that interesting that it's beyond getting to the why, like, why are we seeing more, people wanting to harm our government? Why are we seeing people wanting to take arms up against public officials? And I I just found that to be an interesting theory and, and also kind of showing that, you know, I don't, for me, I just don't think it's just about the military. When I think about domestic terrorism, I think it's even broader. But if there are some trends and this working group is finding that, then I think that's important work that I hope in an election year just doesn't get lost. So, um, no doubt. Yeah. So anyway, that is coming up Sunday, and I hope everybody reads it. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Give it a few beats. Um, the, what do you think about talking about just the idea of, of, of reading the opinion page? I mean, I threw that out there just as a topic of people who get mad that we're so biased <laughs> and explaining <laughs> why we're biased. I mean, what do you think yeah. of that? Well, it's a... Uh... I've, I've battled with this a little bit myself. So, in fact, today it was kind of funny because someone on Twitter was uh, coming at me about a column I wrote for the Sunday's paper, and I was, I was kind of like, okay, well, that's an interesting take, but thank you very much. Um, there's that. There's division. some. Are there some examples of letters that you might be able to? Do you get feedback in letters lately that? people don't know what they're talking about <laughs> oh yeah sure um yeah that, that on really on, on this particular thing um uh, well why don't we try it and just see where it goes and i don't really have an example to use but i'll just kind of we'll just kind of ask questions and throw it back and forth and see what happens all right then all right <clears throat> hi this is the tulsa world opinion video and podcast mm -hmm. and we are this time, going to dive into just a topic that we were discussing a little bit, which is how to read the op-ed page or the opinion page. And part of this gets to the argument that a lot of people have been having with others and themselves about the idea of biased or unbiased news, facts, not facts. And where we're coming from is news versus opinion and, mm -hmm. and the blurring of that. And one of the, the things that uh, uh, let's start over. Ah, Go for it. Because I forgot to introduce ourselves. Okay, Patrick Prince, cut all that out. All right, let's try it again. Welcome to the Tulsa World Opinion Podcast and Video. I am Jenny Graham, the editorials editor, and... I'm Bob Set, editorials writer. And we thought we would talk a little bit about this notion of, as I call it, how to read the opinion section. But what I'm really talking about is the difference between news and opinion. 
And this comes up when people want, you know, unbiased news or just the facts. And, and then where do we come into that with opinion? And so one of my favorite things that I, well, not favorite things, but I sort of laugh about is I will share something like a column or an, or an editorial and we'll just get blasted for, why are you so biased? This is biased. And I want, and I usually return, well, yes, that's why it says opinion at the top. So for me, one of the things that I, I want to point out is opinion doesn't mean that we ignore facts. It means that we look at facts, but then from that, we can have a take or analyze something beyond that. And, and so I was going to ask, you know, for Bob, I mean, what, Bob has been writing opinions now for how many months? Uh, two or three, something About like two that. Two or three. So yeah. coming from in, a longtime news reporter coming over into opinion, what, what do you see that as the challenge as an opinion writer in sort of explaining what you did as news and what you're now doing as opinion? Well, I'd say with reporting, it's pretty much you, you're just playing straight. You know, you're going to go out and you're going to get information. You're talking to people and you're putting that information together in a coherent way, uh, fair, accurate, clear as you can, but you're not taking a side. That's the, that's the goal all the way around is you are paid to go get information and put it and get it ready for publication. If I was to describe what we do on the opinion page is we are paid to analyze current events. So it's not even so much of being, you know, a newspaper's hot take artists, because that's not really what we do. But we are trying to look at the information that we gather and maybe call some balls and strikes here. You know, here's what's going on. Here's what we think uh, could be done better. Or here's what's going well. Um, based on facts, based on you know, the reality on the ground. We're not just trying to make this stuff up. We are trying to give you good information, but also, you know, using the experiences that we've had in viewing the world to, to paint that picture. So, and the great thing about it is with, with opinion is it does invite, just like a news story does, but maybe even more so, mm -hmm. it does invite people to respond it's okay if people disagree with what I say. That's what, that's fine. And if someone comes back at me with a reasonable argument, say what I've published is, is not right or something like that, hey, I'm ready for a mea culpa. That's fine. Um, but it is just like you said, you know, we are probably going to have a take or an opinion or a view that is going to have very personal reasonings behind it. You know, some people want to call out a bias or whatever and stuff like that. And I think what it's more like is it's just a viewpoint. Mm -hmm. A story that you see in the news section, it's not a viewpoint, it's information, fact-based information. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing on the opinion page is a fact-based mm -hmm. viewpoint or analysis of something that's going on. Sometimes we're pretty serious and sometimes maybe not quite as serious, so. Right. And sometimes people need to understand that because we both have experience in news. Almost, I think mm -hmm. 20 years for me or a little more than 20 years and it's same for you. Just because they're writing a news story doesn't mean they're biased. It means that this is information that's happening. You might not like the information that's happening, but just because they're writing about it doesn't mean there's there's a bias either way. But when we look at editorials or things that we read might inspire a column because, you know, whatever, we, we see maybe other information from others, you know, we, we have the, the latitude to go beyond that. I, I did want to take a moment for, for people who are watching or are listening to explain what's on the opinion page because we have editorials that represent a board. And we do have at the Tulsa World a board of seven people, and that might go up here in the next year. Uh, but we, but those, the board is made up of the newsroom's leadership and the, the company president. And those are the pieces that run on the left side of the page. And when we put them online, they say editorial. And they're unsigned and they represent what the board has agreed to. And sometimes we don't agree. Sometimes we uh, have to find the common ground, which I find interesting that, 
you know, I might be for something, someone else might be against it. But in order for us to make a comment on behalf of the institution, we have to find common ground. And I always think that if more of our elected leaders would look at the world like that, that we'd probably get more done because we can disagree on certain things, but then try to find something that, that where we intersect. But the other things on the page are our columns. Bob and I write at least one column a week. Often they're, they're serious, you know, they're a take on news. Sometimes I say, I just write goofy things. Like I'll write about my family or an experience. And that's just because that's almost like how I'm feeling at the time. But, but I describe what we do as local columnists, that we're commenting on local things or, or ourselves. So other columnists might be just humor or political, but what we do is sort of general. And then we have, of course, a cartoon, which is syndicated. Um, and then we have letters. And I think letters is where we, that's, that's where anyone, anyone can write a letter. I mean, we have some guidelines. You, you can't compare every person to Hitler. We're not going to allow that. That's not, you know, but, you know, that's, that's where we hope that people will um, bring their perspective and bring their thoughts. So if they disagree with us, they can say, you know, Jenny wasn't right on this. Her take on, um, you know, contraception in schools misses this. And that's fine. We do ask, but I, what I like about letters, and this is, goes across all newspapers, we require a name and a city of residence and a way to contact them to verify they are a real person. Because I think the anonymity of the wild west of social media has just allowed people to be mean and say crazy, mis, you know, wrong information. And that when the letters, you know, I think we have a higher standard and I think it adds to the community in, in engagement. So, and, and Bob right now is the, is the, the letters editor. And so you handle a lot mm -hmm. of those. Um, what is your take on the letter so far? Cause you've been doing it for about, I don't know, almost four months. Have you gotten to know the, the letter writers yet? Yeah. Yeah. Some of these letter writers are, uh, are, uh, repeats they, they they are regulars we'll call them regulars that's a good word for it um <clears throat> i think that what it tells me there, there's a couple of things that i get out of it is the one thing it tells me is that there is an engaged group of people out there and when they see something that they they want to talk about they're going to fire off a letter that's great um another thing that i see with this thing is all of those letters are highly read mm -hmm. people love to read those letters to the editor and they like to comment on them they like to share them and everything like that so it's definitely uh it makes that page even though the letters are a little shorter than the columns and editorials uh, there is a sense of an equal footing that the people that are paid to write here at the tulsa world are pretty much viewed by uh, the readership in terms of, you know, how many people are reading it as no better or no worse than the letter writers. Mm -hmm. So, hey, let's go, you know, bring those stuff in there. Well, you meet our guidelines, pretty good chance it's going to get in. Right. And, and I tell people that they go, as long as in the letters are 250 words, and some people think that is um, way too short, but it actually isn't. And I look at it as a challenge. I, our editorials that run on the left side, they're sometimes 300 words. I mean, they're not much uh, longer often. And and really, a, a good letter gets to the point. And whether yeah. you're, you're disagreeing with us or agree, agreeing with us, or there's just an issue in the community that you're mad about, that pothole in front of your house. It, it's amazing that the stuff that gets attention on our letters. Um, I've, I've, I've often had people ask about the, the guest editorials or also known as op-eds. I think people use those interchangeably, but we do use uh, columns from other people. And what I'm typically looking for is an expert or some sort of unusual experience, a, co a connection to the issue being written about. And oft often I'll get you know someone who's just mad at the president or mad at anyone, and they just want to write a, a guest at a, a guest op-ed on that. And I have to turn them down because they're not connected to that issue. They're not working for that lawmaker or 
having had worked there or tied to the, the issue, whatever it is. So just for those who are wanting to know how, how we choose those, that's where it starts. And, and those columns run about 600 words. So, um, and with, they were emailed to us directly. But I've always said, if you, if you don't get chosen to write a, a column, turn it into a letter because you do not you do not have to be an expert to write a letter. That's where we want everyone's opinion. So, um, that's anyway, kind of an interesting. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you say that because there are some people that have written letters um, who are well known names. You're just within the last few weeks. We've had a couple of people they submitted a letter to the editor. It's like, oh wow, I know that person, and they were able to just say what they wanted to say in two fifty or less. And boom, it's in. It is. And then, and often we'll see like, what is the most highly read uh, piece of the day? And it's, it's a letter or two. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I kind of laugh one. And here I've sweat over a column and, you know, I, I did all this digging and a 250 word letter that just, and, I, and maybe it is, it gets to the point and it is different uh, that that gets the, the most attention. So, so you're right. Um, well, is there anything else you want to add about it, Bob? You know, it's the thing that I would say is that in the, when I got to the Tulsa world and started reading the op-ed section in the pages, honestly, it was one of my favorite parts of the paper, just because I really enjoyed the writing and I appreciated the perspectives and things like that. So doing it now is, uh, well, one, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a, a, a challenge that I take pretty seriously because I hope that when people read our stuff, whether it's the unsigned editorials or our columns or our letters, that they really feel like they're getting something out of it. And then they're not, uh, they're not bored with it or, or something like that. I really do hope that. And, you know, let us know. Talk to us. If we did something good, uh, we always appreciate an attaboy. And if you think we're not doing so good, well, we'll hear from that too and find out what's wrong and, and go with it. Yeah, I appreciate people reading. I'm like, I'm just mm -hmm. glad, even though they may hate what I've written, I'm just glad they're reading it. And, yep. and then if they're really mad, I'll say, please write a letter. It's, it's you know, that's what that's for. We want to have that place in the community where we can disagree or find solutions. Because within disagreements, as we found being on an editorial board, you can find solutions and find areas of agreement. And I think that just ends up making it better. So um, but anyway, I encourage everyone write a letter. So thank you very much. And until next time, bye. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.